all these courses and programs and mentorings and whatever out there, they are fundamentally not designed for the people who are in them to experience massive shifts. The whole setup is more designed for the coaches to make money because they can sell more and more products. <laughs> Good morning, beautiful people. Look at that. Another day in the jungle begins. Got up this morning. Early, early. Polyphasic sleep routine. Going nicely. That was my video editing setup. And then I'm greeted by this magical morning. Hmm. Curious which miracles want to express themselves today. <laughs> Big bamboo. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Here yeah. you do need. Yeah. Here you do need. Here you need. Uh huh. And also here. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. The last also sure. Big bamboo to hold the. So the door run here. Or. I know door. Just um, here's like a wall and then mm -hmm. you walk in here and here you shower mm -hmm. but here you don't see because there's a wall already. Yeah. So without wall, without door. Yeah, no door. Mm -hmm. Do you have any estimate, Adi, how long we will need to, to build like the shower area and the, and the, yeah, and the toilet? Last time For I like told you. people who didn't do that before? Like this, I, we spent like uh, around 10 days to build this. This little hut, yeah. the whole thing. Uh -huh. Okay. We plan to use as a structure, mm -hmm. not bamboo, but uh, squared wood. Yeah. So this so should be, wood. this should be mm. faster, right? So yeah, you order the wood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We would four like four by four. So you want to use for the structure? For the structure, ah, four by four. Okay. And then just put the walls blah, 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 around <laughs> That's it. Not easier. Yeah, that's yeah. that's uh -huh. what I thought. This this should be much easier, mm -hmm. and therefore I have a feeling like how much how long it takes because I did something like that before, but I just didn't use bamboo. Like uh, 60. 60k. Yeah. 60 in the in the shop. Yeah. Was war das Ecocrete offer für den Sack? Circa 100. Also das geht oh, klar. Das geht mir mega klar. Das geht absolut klar. Wow, ich hätte gedacht, ein Vielfaches. Mega. Und Ecocrete ist stärker. How about Super nice. Yeah. We, yeah, we, we, because we, we asked um, for like, here's an Ecocrete. I already, I already mm -hmm. sent it to Adi. And it's, 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 it's expensive, more expensive, oh, but, but, yeah. not, but not so much. It's um, just like, when you say 60k, um, like the Ecocon, Ecocrete is like 100k. No. I, I got the price list. Really? I asked them, yeah. I, really? I got the price list today. <laughs> last it's 100k. Time, last time I buy for Echo, yeah, yeah Echo smell like that, like a 400%. Really? Yeah. Really? Wow. It's I got really? the price list. It's 100k. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a 40 kilo sack as well. Yeah, 40. So and it's also, the same weight. Uh, okay. But I feel gra great attitude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, grateful. Yeah. 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 yeah, I have job. Yeah. But a lot of People do work like me, yeah. and they're very rich. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> they do, and they get big project. Yeah. They offering yeah. like a very expensive price, and the customer just okay. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. But I'm worried like that. Yeah. Mm. I'm worried if I just offering higher price. Yeah. Mm. And then in the future also yeah. I'm worried they are uh, regret. Yeah. Why Regret. too expensive? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I just want to make work. Yeah. 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 yeah I feel that. Mm. You really care about the quality. I feel that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Adi. I really Thank appreciate you. that. All right, friends. You see it. The speed is accelerating. Wow. We're planning the pathways because with the big rain and raining season, of course, they need to be really strong, really stable. Um, the foundations are getting built. There are more and more workers on the land. Um, by the end of the week, it is projected that already the first platform can be put there. <sighs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. Our future parking lot is always full with material of all kinds. 
when the lat is still there. So yeah, many things are going on at the same time. We finally now have water. Um, not super reliable yet, working on a even better solution, but for now it's at least there's something there. It's a massive project, I can tell you. It's a really massive project. <laughs> and it's already October 9, so seven-ish weeks left. So it's good that the speed is accelerating tremendously. The space where the banana flowers are. Yeah. For here. This is where we put the sink. Here. Okay. Is that's the sink? That's the sink. Um, from here, 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 here. That's the toilet. From here to here to here to here. And down there you can see a square for the showers. Yeah. And we would, uh, we need um, just, just the square. And how about um, this one? This tree? Yeah, the avocado. Um, right now we would like to leave it yeah. and see later on if, if, if it's an issue. Okay, yeah. But yeah, it would be yes, sad if we need we'll, to cut it. We'll like, be. let's plan around it if possible. You can cut, but not cut, cut on the, mm -hmm. on the bottom. Ah, you mean like cut some yeah. of the branches? Yeah, trim yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. So. was just closed. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Three months of intense processes with our 10 custodia preneurs. Amazing, talented, heart-driven, motivated, smart, kind women and men that I was fortunate enough to be able to support and guide over the past three months on their journeys of building building a business that is in alignment with the greater whole, that serves the more beautiful world our hearts know as possible. It was an intense ride. It was a really intense ride. Yeah, and this comes to an end. And over the past weeks, I was really contemplating opening a second round. But the more time passed, the clearer it became that no. I will not open a second round of custodia preneurs. I will open something way more powerful. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to share with I'd love to share that with you. Now. Yes. Yesterday it was birthed. <laughs> but let's find a proper setting for that. Alright, there we are. Look at that, just pure jungle. Here are the mountains. There's not a single house that is visible from here. The perfect setting to share something extraordinary with you. This. But before, little backstory. I've been a coach for 11 years now, in 2013. I put myself out there and I offered my knowledge, my support, my space to people for the first time. And over the years, the more time has passed, the more I've gotten a little bit disillusioned and a little bit like about the whole coaching industry. Because I sense that all these people out there who are running from one online course to the next seminar, to the next retreat, always on the hunt for the next big breakthrough, for the next big realization, for the profound healing. But they mostly don't find what they are looking for. And I sense that like in my circle with the people I'm in contact with, like a little bit of the hype of this whole coaching thing has fizzled. And there's a little bit of this disillusionment in many people that are like, Ugh, Somehow most of the things out there don't hold what they promise. Don't really change our lives, although they market them. They are marketed with big slogans. 
And I think it's because all these courses and programs and mentorings and whatever out there, they are fundamentally not designed for the people who are in them to experience massive shifts. They are more designed like setup wise, not because the people who are offering them are bad people. No, no, no. But the whole setup is more designed for the coaches to make money because they can sell more and more products like to all the people out there and for the participants to have this search and motivation, this like rush. But soon after this rush fades away and they are back where they way before and I definitely see myself as as a part of that yeah I marketed eight week online courses as well I did a lot of that in the past but I don't want to do this anymore and over the past weeks and months I've asked myself the question how would a setup look like that would be really dedicated to the like maximum serving ma like to the really to the deepest possible transformation for the people that are in there and to explore that i spent a lot of time in the world of professional sports because there's a lot of ex excellence there's a lot of mastery i asked myself the question like what do all the Bruce Lees, all the Serena Williamses, all the Cristiano Ronaldos, all the Usain Bolts out there, what do they have in common? How did they get so extraordinary in what they are doing? <sighs> and for none of them, the answer is because they did this super spectacular eight-week online course. <laughs> they were training, they were practicing for years and years and years and decades day in and day out all of them had their dojo the dojo in Japanese culture is a is a place to practice a place to practice like first and foremost martial arts but really practice how to live life when you are surrounded by other practitioners who are on the same path as you are on and you have an open-ended container, not one that will be closed after eight weeks or three months or whatever, but one that is really open-ended, where you continue to walk this path for years and years and years and you have other people by your side who are driven and ambitious and um, talented as you are, then beautiful things can happen. But this is super like super normal in professional sports like nobody would nobody would would hope to rise to the level of performance of these greats of these goats um by an eight week online course like everybody knows practice for 5 10 15 20 years each and every day day in and day out but in our world in the coaching world somehow this is not present and i want to change that I want to change that today. And this brings me to Custodia Lab. What we are doing here in Bali with building Custodia is to create a physical space where mastery can be achieved, where custodianship can be explored where embodiment of what we wish to see out there in the world can be can take place but what we aim to do is not only build this one place here in Bali but to build a global network of people who are on this path of custodianship and who are bringing spaces like here in Bali to life and in other places of the world too People who are stepping into this. People who are stepping into this attitude of custodianship. Yeah. 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 
Ga je snacken? Ga je kleine snacken? Ja. Yeah. People who are stepping into this attitude of custodianship and living their places from the standpoint of let me care for what is truly meaningful for you, for me. And this requires a lot from us. This is not something that is done easily. Papa? Kesha, huh? Huh? Yeah, yeah. Can you take water? Kesha. This requires practice. This requires open-ended practice. Not eight weeks or three months. And that's why Custodia Lab from today on will be our digital hub for custodianship. It's accessible 24-7 from wherever you are in the world and it's open-ended. People whom I invite into this space to practice will be there without an ending. Because the path that we are on, sinking deeper into the custodians that we can be and that this world calls us to be, is a path that requires years and years and years of dedicated effort, of commitment and of experiments. And this is what we're gonna do in the Custodia Lab. Hmm. And I'm super excited to be able to share this with you. This has grown inside myself for the past quite a while. <laughs> it's a community of practice. I love this quote by Thich Nhat Hanh. The next Buddha will possibly not take on any individual form. Maybe he will take the form of a Sangha, a community of practice. And that's the purpose of Custodia Lab. We're going to start now with a small group. Half of the slots are already taken before we're launching. I invited some very powerful co-creators that stayed with us in Poland, that were part of the Custodia Preneurs business coaching that just ended and a couple of other people. And to that we have a handful of vacant slots for the beginning. We're going to open the space later on again. But for now, I want to start with a really, really close, really tightly knit group of practitioners who are in it for the long run, who want to sink deeper into their embodiment of what they want to see in the world, both inside themselves and on the outside, with the service that we put out there in our companies, in our families, in our communities, and ultimately to the whole of Gaia, as well as our own embodiment of what we want to bring into the world. And that's the purpose, a place to practice, a place that I will be guiding, that I will be hosting and that at the same time slowly as more time passes wants to gradually morph into a more co-creative community-led space. All further details are now on our deck when I finished this morning. <laughs> it was a beautiful act of sacred work. I'll put that here and want to invite you to dive into that. <sighs> this will be our bigger picture, our overarching network, our global web that holds together spaces like here in Bali and in other places of the world. I'm closely connected with powerful creators who are going for similar projects in, in Europe and South America and other parts of Asia. And I want to bring that together in one online space. And this is Custodia Lab. <laughs> would love to Yeah. Would love to put out this invitation. If that resonates, check out the deck, fill out the form. And if we sense a, a resonance and a possibility to create magic together, then we'll hop on a call and see what what is possible. So that we together <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that we together support the next generation in growing up. Papa, das essen? Ja. Ja. Kannst du essen? Ja. Ist ein Blatt? Nee. <laughs> Nein. And take care of what is close to arts. Yeah. <laughs> mm.
Wow. Wow, wow, 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 wow. The thing is, what is our like the proposal of building or what concept do we have? Can you guys please briefly describe? Mm -hmm. um, maybe I give you a super quick overview over the project and then we dive into the into the intricacies. Cool. Um, so for us, what is very important is to like the the whole place that we are building. Uh, we call it Castodia. Um, it comes from the word custodian or custodianship, which for me means taking care of the whole, taking care of the planet, like not only living our lives or doing our things just from this ego-driven perspective of more for me, 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 but instead like um, yeah, designing a place that really works for everybody, for the people that are living there, for the future generations, for the environment, for the local village we are, um, we are embedded in and um, this is really like the core driver for, for what we are building and at the same time yeah. we, are, we are always trying to balance like this idealistic vision of how things should be and at the same time we need to be pragmatic and uh, need to check in what is possible here given the circumstances, given the budget, given the skills that we have, given the time frame that we have because by December 1st we want to invite the first people to this place, um, Anya and uh, and some other beautiful people, and um, this is like the, the 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 challenge. So the platform is five by five meters, and the pillars they have um, like like every platform is on another height, so they have different um, lengths of pillars. But what our what our um, builder, um, how do you say, um, made clear to us is that how they build the foundations of the platforms that's for the slope and so on calculated and 100% safe like therefore is taken care of what we are a bit more um, trying to figure out is how can we build ways pathways that will stay there even if there's heavy rain involved um, and how to protect the slopes here and well at the same time using like as little or maybe no concrete if possible of course our builder said like yeah put concrete everywhere and then don't worry but given our ecological uh, um, criteria this is not something that we want to do yeah so that's that's the thing like we want to use as little concrete as possible while making sure that it's 100 percent um safe structurally safe Oh, that was a good Zoom call with Nitish from Nepal and he is a friend of Anya. Anya is from Germany and Anya will join us here in December for our first Bali cohort and um, over the past days we shared like our plans and at the same time our challenges with... Uh, oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm carrying the laptop at the coconut in one hand. Wait doesn't work okay. that was better um, our challenges with the super steep hill and how to ensure that the earth stays where it should be and that when the rainy season is coming like the whole pathways are being washed away we shared that on Instagram or telegram to contact and so on and now we get connected to this great dude from Nepal like and he yeah, gave so many um, really good impulses, food for thought. <sighs> I love the network, I love the network, yeah. Mm.